prophecy is defined as a statement that something will happen in the future or the power or ability to know what will happen in the future. It's a strong literary device that leads to foreshadowing and has become extremely popular in books and modern science fiction and fantasy movies. Prophecy also plays an important role in Western religions. The texts of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are filled with the words of prophets. In fact, the Old Testament of the Bible contains no fewer than 353 prophecies foretelling the coming of Jesus Christ. Some of these are particularly accurate. Micah 5.2 even states the birthplace of Christ. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. It is the fulfillment of prophecies like this that have become central to modern mythology in movies such as Star Wars and Harry Potter and help to satisfy a certain human need. In Star Wars, we are not privy of the prophecy of the Chosen One during the original three movies of A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. It isn't until the release of the prequels of Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith that the prophecy is revealed to the audience and becomes a major storyline. The Chosen One prophecy states, In the time of greatest despair, a child shall be born who will destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force. Early on in The Phantom Menace, a Jedi named Qui-Gon Jinn comes in contact with a young boy who is said to be born of a virgin mother. That sounds a little familiar. This boy also has metachlorian levels that are extremely high. Jinn tells this young boy named Anakin Skywalker, Without the metachlorians, life could not exist, and we would have no knowledge of the Force. They continually speak to us, telling us the will of the Force. When you learn to quiet your mind, you'll hear them speaking to you. Some other Jedi do not have as strong a belief in young Anakin. Yoda has his doubts and believes that Anakin's future is too cloudy. Another Jedi named Mace Windu even goes as far to question Jin, saying, You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the Force. You believe it's this boy? Anakin eventually begins his training to become a Jedi. We see this through the rest of Phantom Menace, and in Attack of the Clones he's been a Padawan, or Jedi apprentice, under Obi-Wan Kenobi for a number of years. The third prequel, Revenge of the Sith, is where the prophecy starts to become very interesting. There is foreshadowing of this in the previous movies, where Anakin begins turning to the dark side as he kills a village full of sand people who have kidnapped his mother, going against the Jedi Code. In Revenge of the Sith, Anakin grows closer to Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine is known to the audience as a Sith, or Dark Lord, but the characters are not yet aware of this fact. Palpatine has previously tried to win over Anakin with talk of stopping people from dying. Anakin has already seen his mother die, and has foreseen the death of his wife, so this has an extremely strong impact on Anakin. During a battle with Mace Windu, Palpatine reveals to Anakin that he is in fact the one who can keep people from dying, winning Anakin over to his side as Anakin kills Windu. Anakin follows this up by killing most of the Jedi in the temple because he's led to believe that this will help him achieve what he wants in protecting his wife. This plunges him even farther into the dark side, and it looks like he will not be the one to fulfill the prophecy after all. We next see Anakin as Darth Vader over the next three movies, continuing to follow the dark side and the Emperor. It isn't until Return of the Jedi that the possibility of Anakin fulfilling the prophecy comes back. In the final climactic scene, where Palpatine is trying to kill Anakin's son, Luke, Anakin slash Darth realizes that Luke has always believed there's still good inside of him. Anakin turns on the Emperor, throwing him into a reactor shaft and killing him. The efforts from the fight with Palpatine weakens Anakin to the point of no return. He sacrifices himself, and by killing the Sith Lord Emperor Palpatine, brought balance to the Force, fulfilling the prophecy. A prophecy is also central to the storyline of the Harry Potter series. Sybil Trelawney delivers the prophecy as she's interviewing for a job with Albus Dumbledore, who is headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Trelawney was hoping to become a divination teacher at Hogwarts, and her interview wasn't going well until she suddenly falls into a trance and speaks the following prophecy. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches, born to those who have thrice defied him, born as the seventh month dies, and the Dark Lord will mark him as his equal. But he will have power the Dark Lord knows not, and either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord will be born as the seventh month dies. The prophecy isn't revealed to the audience until the fifth book or movie, The Order of the Phoenix. We're left to wonder throughout the first four stories in the series why Harry and the Dark Lord Voldemort have such a strong connection. 
Dumbledore doesn't reveal the prophecy to Harry until this late in the story because he cares so much for the young boy and doesn't want to burden him with the knowledge that Harry will have to be the one to kill Voldemort or else be killed himself. While Trelawney was delivering the prophecy to Dumbledore, one of Voldemort's followers, Severus Snape, was eavesdropping. He was apprehended after only hearing the first part of the prophecy. Snape brings this information to Voldemort, who decides to act, not knowing that there's more to the prophecy. Dumbledore would later tell Harry about Voldemort's understanding of this truncated version of the prophecy. Always he was on the lookout for the one who would challenge him. He heard the prophecy and he leapt into action, with the result that he not only handpicked the man most likely to finish him, he handed him uniquely deadly weapons. Since Voldemort hasn't heard the whole prophecy, he sought out and tried to kill Harry as a baby, before Harry could grow up and be a deadly enemy. In doing so, he unwittingly transferred some of his power to Harry, along with part of his soul. Since the age of 11, when Harry came back into the wizarding world, he has consciously chosen to fight against Voldemort. After learning of the prophecy, he could have chosen not to fight anymore, because he didn't want to kill anybody. Dumbledore points out that at this point in Harry's journey, he's got to try to kill Voldemort not because of the prophecy, but because of who Harry has become. Harry realizes that he would want to be the one to finish Voldemort because of all the pain the Dark Lord has caused. This touches on another religious theme of free will versus predestination. Harry exercises free will and attempts to fulfill the prophecy. In the end, the prophecy is fulfilled in more ways than anyone foresaw by the phrase, neither can live while the other survives. As Voldemort had accidentally transferred part of his soul to Harry, and had inadvertently taken some of Harry's soul into himself, they're both talisman from keeping each other from completely dying. Harry chooses to sacrifice himself and allows Voldemort to kill him, which is ultimately unsuccessful, ridding his body of a piece of Voldemort's soul. Anchored by his blood in Voldemort, Harry chooses to return to the world after a brief conversation with Dumbledore in assertive purgatory, and during a final confrontation with Voldemort, uses a spell that causes Voldemort's final killing curse to rebound upon himself. Thus, each of them killed the other, with one killing being slightly more permanent than the other. There are some similarities between Anakin and Harry's prophecies and some of the prophecies about Jesus. First, all of the subjects are relatively young when they first heard of what was expected of them. They all at one time or another asked or searched for a way to either turn away from the prophecy or asked about having to be the one to fulfill a certain prophecy. Harry asks Dumbledore if there's a different way, Anakin is drawn to the dark side, and in Luke 22:44, Christ begs God to take it all away from him by asking, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. All of these subjects also sacrifice either their life or part of themselves for the greater good. Jesus redeems us of our sins, Anakin sacrifices himself at the end to defeat the Emperor and the Dark Side, and Harry allows Voldemort to kill him so that part of Voldemort's soul dwelling inside Harry can also be killed. Do prophecies make these stories more popular, or are we drawn to these stories of prophecies because they're familiar to us? It is my opinion that we see a little of ourselves in these stories. I think there is a basic human emotion or connection to these types of stories. Most people want free will and the ability to see themselves as part of the bigger picture. Prophecies have a way of showing that life isn't meaningless, that some people are put on earth to fulfill a higher calling. And when we don't see it in our own lives, we look for things such as science fiction, fantasy, and religion to fill that need.